so uh, the, thank you for the introduction. Uh, so the title of my talk today, Bring All Your Features, and uh, it's on Arabic, the critic recovery. And uh, as you mentioned, I, I, I actually I was at the Qatar Computing Research Institute until uh, Thursday, which is two days ago. And I'm, I'm just starting uh, a new job at uh, AI Explain uh, starting on Monday. Uh, so let me just, uh, before I delve into the issue of democratization, I'm just going to give you uh, some background on the group uh, at uh, QCRI, uh, the Qatar Computing Research Institute, and specifically the Arabic Language Technologies Group, uh, which uh, I was heading until uh, very recently. Uh, so we work on many different uh, topics. Uh, we have the set projects uh, that include uh, things related to basic Arabic NLP, uh, which includes segmentation, part of speech tagging, parsing, identity recognition, and the like. And this is all part of a toolkit called Farasa. We also work on machine translation, the, primarily between Arabic and English. And our focus uh, or our fourth is in uh, dialectal uh, translation. Uh, the third project is speech, uh, speech processing. And we work on both uh, speech recognition and uh, text-to-speech. And our system has been spun off as a private as a, as a startup uh, about a year ago. And the last thing we work on is uh, is news and social media analysis. This includes uh, detection of propaganda, bias, uh, offensiveness, and sentiment and stance and so all sorts of things. Uh, for my new place where I'm going, I'm, as I said, I'm going to uh, I'm going to a company called AI Explain which is basically a marketplace and a platform for people to uh, develop, sell, enhance, and optimize and manage uh, AI models. Uh, so, and the platform now has more than 25,000 uh, speech and language processing models and is supported by hundreds of specialists. Uh, so basically the goal is that people log in, they can build uh, complicated models or pipelines of models uh, very quickly. They can test them and they can deploy the deploy them uh, with minimal uh, AI uh, uh, with minimal AI expertise. So, uh, what I work on, I work uh, on two things: uh, basic NLP, uh, which is the topic of uh, the, 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 of, the of, of my talk today, uh, also text classification and search. And on the social computing front, I work on sense detection and the detection of, uh, of bots uh, uh, and uh, coordinated accounts and propaganda on social media. Uh, so what else do I do aside from the technical stuff? So I enjoy photography quite a bit. And uh, as uh, you mentioned, I have a few books, both in Arabic and English, and uh, I enjoy calligraphy and I have a YouTube channel and if you're an Arabic speaker and you're interested in social psychology, I think you'll find the channel quite entertaining. Uh, so uh, before I delve into the stuff related to dichotization, it's, it's probably it's important to give a, a quick background on the Arabic NLP part of things, because much of the uh, of the of the progress that we were able to make on uh, dichotization is due to the stuff that we were able to do on Arabic NLP. So I'll just talk briefly about Farasa. Uh, so Farasa is is online. You can actually uh, down you can download it uh, for free, and uh, or you can actually try it online also for free, uh, or use it as a web API. Uh, so it's a comprehensive toolkit for Arabic processing. It does uh, word segmentation, uh, part of speech tagging, named entry recognition, parsing, and the critic recovery. And as I said, it's free for research purposes. If you'd like to get it for uh, for commercial purposes, you need to contact uh, QCRI. And the nice thing is, it's state of the art in all the the, uh, the comp in its components, while being significantly faster than all the competing uh, toolkits. So if you want to do anything in Arabic, this is probably the best place uh, to start. So uh, some of the stuff that, that, that I mentioned, like why, why do do segmentation? So segmentation uh, would be if, if you have a word like uh, kitabuhum, means their book, it will separate them into kitab and then hum, or al-kitab becomes al plus kitab, which means the book and so forth. And if you're able to make segmentation, then you're able to return all the words back to their their, their, their stem, which is kitab. And this would be a very helpful in uh, applications such, uh, such, such as information retrieval. And as we will see later, it's also uh, very helpful uh, when we deal with dichotization. Uh, this can also be for the uh, use for uh, dictionary deconstruction. So we're starting from a word, we can find the lemma and the root and so forth. 
and the automatic tagging can be helpful. Let's say named end recognition can be helpful for applications such as information extraction, where you will try to find from the sentence whether the uh, you know a set person visited a set location. It's also important for curriculum construction, like measuring sentence complexity. So if the words have many prefixes and suffixes or are long or the sentences are longer or they have complex uh, POS uh, part of speech uh, sequences, uh, that may actually indicate that the sentence is more difficult. Uh, uh, we do parsing also. So uh, parsing is what you would call in Arabic Arab. Uh, so this is very helpful in semantic processing and identifying the relationship between words. So if I say, you know, ذهب الولد الصغير إلى المدرسة, uh, the, the young boy uh, went to school, we would know the boy is the subject of, of the verb uh, went, and إلى المدرسة, which means to the school, is a prepositional phrase which is tied to the verb. And the last thing is the critic recovery, which I'll give it a lot more time, is important for natural language learning, uh, text-to-speech, and uh, book publishing, if you want to publish a book and, and put the critics on it. And I'm going to show you a very quick demo for uh, how, uh, uh, I don't know when I shared, uh, whether, let, let me let me reshare to make sure that the sound is, is activated. Just give me a second. Okay, you can still see my screen, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, so let me show you a demo, a quick demo for uh, for decretization and how it's used uh, in, uh, in, um, uh, in in text to speech. So uh, basically, uh, the, w you can input the, the text that you would like, and then right after you uh, you input it, then it you can it automatically decretizes the text. And then if you want to, uh, we, you were able to see the demo, right? Uh, so, so basically, the uh, the text to speech that you heard is uh, the text that you've heard uh, pronounced is actually done completely by computer. And Dr. Ahmed Abdel Ali, who's also on the call, is is leading this effort. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me go to the next slide. Okay. So let me talk uh, for the remaining part of the uh, of the uh, of the talk. For the rest of the talk, I'm going to be uh, discussing Arabic decretization specifically. And this is work that I did with uh, Hamdi Mubarak and Ahmed Abdel Ali. Uh, and as I mentioned, Dr. Ahmed Abdel Ali is, is on the call also. So the motivation, as you saw, that we can use uh, uh, the decretization for, th for applications such as text-to-speech, which is really, really important. Uh, and uh, Arabic uh, diacritics have actually two types. Uh, the first type of diacritics is what they would call core word diacritics, which disambiguate how a word, what a word means in context. And the other type of diacritic is called the case ending, uh, which appears typically at the end of the stem or the end of the word, and uh, and says what what you know, and, and basically demarks what uh, the word is doing in context, uh, and or its syntactic role in the sentence. So, if we look at the core words, uh, if we have two sentences like this, where we would say the uh, habtu or the habat ila al madrasa means I went or she went to the school, and the word that we're interested in is al madrasa. And in the other sentence, it says قابلت المدرسة. I met with the teacher, and the, the teacher here, because of the term at the end, is a female. So uh, the, if you look at the word المدرسه or المدرسه, uh, they have actually two different diacritics, and, and the core word diacritics would be the one to, uh, to handle which one should we pick in context to figure out uh, what the word is, is actually doing, or the meaning of the word. Uh, so core word diacritics disambiguate the words in context. Okay. So uh, to work on this problem, we had uh, we obtained a large training set. It has about 9.7 million tokens uh, with 194 unique diacritized uh, tokens. And it's mostly modern standard Arabic with some classical Arabic mixed in. And the nice thing about the corpus, it is it covers all sorts of genre like economics and sports and politics and so forth. And uh, we did uh, extra rounds of review to make sure that uh, you know the number of errors are very few. So our estimate is that the errors are below 1% or hopefully below, below half a percent even. And we made sure that there are no missing diacritics. Uh, the other competing uh, corpus that we could have used, we could have used the Arabic uh, pen tree bank. 
uh, but we opted not to use it uh, for many reasons. One of them is because it's much smaller. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a little over half a million tokens while uh, our corp corpus is nearly uh, 9.5, is around 9.5 million tokens. So it's much, much, much bigger. And also the other problem with the ATB or the Arabic country bank is the inconsistency uh, of applying the critics. Uh, so for example, I have the, the case here of Innahu uh, where it's decretized with the Shadda, like uh, the first form sometimes, and without the Shadda a second time, even though both of them uh, should have uh, the Shadda in the word. Uh, also, some uh, default or uh, or Sukun uh, words are, are are just missing their diacritics. So we opted to use a much bigger and much more regular uh, corpus for our work. And as you will see, this paid off uh, handsomely as far as the accuracy is concerned. Uh, if any of you have any questions while I'm walk while I'm talking, feel free to stop me. I'll be happy to entertain questions as I'm going. Okay. Uh, so once we had this corpus, the next step was to build uh, dictionaries based on this corpus. And we mil built multiple uh, dictionaries uh, that uh, to use. So one of them, the first one was building a dictionary based on the full diacritized surface form. So if you have the word Wakitabihim, for example, then this would be the entry. And then in front of it would be all the different diacritized forms. Uh, it happens that, uh, so, so it happens that Wakitabihim, if you remove all the diacritics, then you can have actually multiple diacritized forms. So we can have Wakitabihim and Wakitabuhum and or Wakitabahum. Uh, so it actually would have three different forms. Uh, the other way is to, uh, to do uh, the other dictionary that we built uh, was to also uh, do the same thing, but after removing case ending. So Wakitab, you know, the, the case ending would, would appear on, on the ba here, on this letter, after, the, after this letter. So we omitted uh, the, 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 uh, the, the critic on the, on the, on for the case ending. So we were able to do uh, matching or we're trying to, uh, because we're trying to do core, word, core words and then we'll worry about the case ending later on. And also the, the decretized form of the stem. So after removing all the prefixes and suffixes with and without the case ending. And also we went to stem templates. Uh, so for example, uh, you know, Wakitabuhum. Uh, uh, would be on the same, uh, and, you know, the stem template for it would be wafi uh, So basically, for for trilateral uh, roots in Arabic, they are represented as fa ala, for example. So the kitab has uh, the the core, you know, the the tri the trilateral root of kitab is kataba. So basically, we would transform this into an, a generic form that would apply to multiple words at the same time. And also uh, the diacritized stem template with and without case ending. So it will be fi'ali and fi'al, which kitab, uh, kitabi and kitab. Okay. And uh, so we built dictionaries using all these different representations of words. And this we will help. This will help us as we will see while we are diacritizing words. Okay. And and also while we're building uh, uh, unigram, bigram, and maybe tr even trigram uh, language models. So the baseline uh, that we use is basically using a simple header markup model, where basically we trained uh, a language model, uh, on a, a bigram language model. And given an input sentence, we would construct all the possible diacritized form, forms for every word. And, uh, and then we would use uh, a Viterbi to, to detect which is the, the, most, the, the, the most proper uh, diacritized form in context. And this is without case ending. Okay. So if I have uh, the word uh, ma, mi, mi, uh, ma for example, it could be mas, which means to, to erase, or masaha means he erased, and musiha means somebody erased. Uh, where it's in an uh, uh, in, indirect form or uh, a passive uh, form or passive tense. And unless, uh, hopefully it was in, in our data set, there was only one diacritized form. So given, the, 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 given that we represented things as a, as a hidden Markov model and we're using an HMM to pick the, the most, hopefully the, the correct forms, uh, this, the Viterbi algorithm picks Mashun uh, Nassi, the, the, the deletion of the text, okay? And all the testing that we've done, uh, we usually do on a data set called Wikinews, uh, which has 70,000, I'm sorry, which has 70 articles 
uh, in multiple genres. It covers politics, sports, and and economics, and so forth, and has about eighteen thousand words. And it's quite a tough, actually, uh, data set to, to to test on. So the numbers that you would actually get in practice that we would report, uh, we, as we're reporting, the numbers you'd actually get in practice will be slightly higher than the, than the numbers that you would get on Wiki test or Wiki News. Okay. Uh, so the next uh, thing that we could also do is 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 have what we would call defaults. So, for example, function words like min, an, fi, ala, and so forth. Typically, they would have just one dictatized form. Uh, this is kind of uh, tricky because, you know, so like kayf, for example, or how could potentially, we can use kayyafa, uh, could be a potential word, but but kayfa as a stop word would appear much, 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 much more often than than the, uh, the other form. And the other case like an is like from. Uh, there's another word called anna, which means he, that it appeared, they fa'anna lana bisirbin and so forth. So, uh, so Anna is very, very rare. So if we also, so we resorted to just picking uh, the most common form uh, because, you know, the other forms would appear probably less than 1% or probably one in a thousand times. Uh, so we, 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 we resorted to using defaults and this is kind of an engineering hack. Also, we constructed the a dictionary of all words appearing more than 10 times with one dicratized form. Uh, so, so for example, in our data set, uh, Gaza appeared as, uh, as has only one form. So we would actually do a lookup and, and regardless of the play, regardless of, of context, we'll just use Gaza every time. So this is the default is more of an engineering hack to, to simplify uh, the case for uh, dicratization. The other thing, the, and aside from the baseline, and the defaults, we started using backoffs. And backoffs are important because what if you don't find uh, the word that you're looking for in the dictionaries that we've constructed? As I said, mentioned, we, we had uh, dictionaries based on the full word, uh, based on the stem, based on, uh, and, uh, on, on other things. So basically, uh, we, we, we would actually back off to, uh, to, to these uh, dictionaries that we've built earlier. So if, if you, let's say you cannot find well muhasaba, which means and, uh, or well muhasaba, which is, uh, and the accountant, uh, basically you would stem the word. And then we have a dictionary and a language model based solely on the stems. So you would actually see that, uh, that, uh, well muhasaba means the, the, and the female accountant, uh, the, the core of it or the stem of it is muhasib, which thankfully has, uh, or muhasaba actually, and it, thankfully, it has muhasib, it has muhasaba and muhasaba and so forth. So it has a limited number of of dicratized forms. And when you back off now, the since you were not you, even though you were not able to find the full word in your dictionary, you are able to find the stem in your dictionary, and you can still use a language model to continue on. What if you cannot even find the stem in the, your, your dictionary? Then we would use even another backup. Where I mentioned the, the stem templates based on the, tri the trilateral rules where they would be represented as fa'il or fa'il or maf'ul and so forth. Then we would back off to that. And you will find that, uh, that al-muhasiba is is, has the stem template of uh, mufa'ila. Uh, and once you go to the stem template, then you would you would pick the most likely uh, dicratized form for this uh, uh, stem template. So you, we're backing off multiple times. Once first to the stem, if we're not able to find, if we were not find the, if, sorry, if we're not able to find the word, then we back off to the stem. And if we're not able to find the stem, then we back off to uh, the stem template. And if you not cannot find the stem template for the whole word, then you back off to the stem template of the stem. So there are three steps for back off here. Okay. And if that, even that fails, then we go for another back off where we use a transliteration, where basically we try to get uh, to see whether we've seen this, the same word. Uh, and this typically would be named entities where we have seen them being decretized uh, uh, we've seen we have a, a, a word list that is that has the critics in Arabic and their transliteration in, Ara in, in English, and then we try to map the letters from Arabic to English and see which the uh, which vowels in English would correspond to which diacritics in Arabic. So if I have uh, Hassan here, for example, uh, you would see that Hassan with a ha with a fatha, which is a ha ha, 
uh, would match to HA and Sa would match to SSA and Noon with a Sukun and at the end of it would match to N. Uh, so using a CRF a condition random field uh, fields uh, sequence labeler, then given the, the, the characters and, and their match and their matching uh, uh, English characters that correspond to them, then we're able to reintroduce uh, the diacritics back into words that we have not seen before. The accuracy of this approach is not great. So it's about 79%, but these are cases where we're completely lost. So 79% is, is definitely better than getting 0%. Uh, so you asked about uh, the, uh, the the accuracy of uh, of the system. So the baseline system uh, has a word error rate of about six point six percent. When we added the defaults, that that gave us another two percent, which is uh, which basically what the defaults do, as I said, is they eliminate the ambiguity by quite a bit. Uh, stem back off by itself uh, gave us also a good boost of about two percent. Uh, backing off to stem templates gave us a boost of slightly under 1%. Transliteration did very little, but just, you know, the, the improvements, which was slightly better. Using all the backoffs together uh, gave us more than 2% uh, reduction in word error rate. And then using everything together uh, gave us a word error rate of 3.29%. And uh, so obviously the, the, the word, since it's a word error rate, the lower the number, the better. And when we compare to, uh, to other uh, toolkits like uh, Madamira, Madamira was getting about 6.7%, uh, which is significantly higher than the, uh, almost double our word, actually more than double our word error rate. Uh, Belnikov and Glass is, uh, is another paper that got published in 2015, is, is, has much, much higher word error rate. And the only competitive one, which is slightly beat, beat us here, is uh, the one for, uh, for Ashwan uh, et al. Uh, and as we will see, once we combine everything together, the, the, the core, word, uh, core, core word error rates and the case endings, we actually beat Rashwan at the end. Okay. Does that answer your question? Sure. So, so for, the, uh, for the modern standard Arabic, these are the numbers you should expect. If you go for classical Arabic, the numbers will be very different. Uh, so, because the word usage in classical text is very, very different than modern standard Arabic. So, let me give you a, a specific example. If I say Qita Gaza, which means Gaza Strip, uh, in modern days, we would only consider this as a valid uh, diacritized form. Uh, when we tried using uh, classical text to, to train our diacritizer, it would always diacritize. Qita uh, Gaza as Qutta Gaza, which means the bandits of Gaza, uh, which is a completely different meaning. And, and the word Qutta or Qutta Turuk is not, you know, is not very common now anyway, right? So using an MSA model to, uh, to diacritize classical Arabic, or using classical Arabic system to diacritize MSA system would likely uh, yield to suboptimal results. Uh, if you go to back our, to our paper, uh, on on the the which I'm on which I'm basing much of uh, the presentation here, uh, you will see that we also did work on classical Arabic and we trained a completely separate system for classical Arabic. So we don't I don't recommend that you use an MSA system for classical Arabic. Okay. So uh, moving on, let's look at case endings and case endings are significantly harder than uh, than uh, than core words. And the reason why th that is the case, so if, if, you, if you actually, for, for uh, core words, uh, if you pick the most likely diacritized form every time, you will typically get more, more than 90% accuracy, which is less than 10% word error rate, right? Uh, but when you get to case ending, things are very, very different. Okay. Uh, so the first approach you could have tried is to use parsing. Uh, and parsing would say, you know, if I'm the verb, I would know whether the verb is in present and, you know, or past or, or, or tense and so forth. And where is the subject? The subject will topic typically be marfu'ah. And I would use a, a parsing uh, to, to do this. And we have also already have a parser. But parsing had two issues that, that, we, that were almost non-starters. And this is why we did not pursue this route. One, parsing is very, very slow. And the second problem is the state of the art parser now for Arabic has an accuracy of about 89%, which happens actually to be farasa. Uh, but we are still, it's not high enough that you can, it's not 
the accuracy is not sufficient enough that would get us into the numbers that we would actually be looking for. Okay. So speed and, uh, and accuracy were issues for using parsing, and this is the reason why we did not pursue that route. The other first route that we pursued, uh, and, uh, and I'll show you later why this is not such a great route to, to, do, to do, is to use classical ML, which is the, the method that we came up with probably about five years ago or so, or four or five years ago, but we kind of abandoned this method, but it's instructive and it helped us a lot in understanding the problem a bit more. Uh, so we, we framed this problem, as, we framed the, 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 the case ending recovery as, an SV, as, a, as a ranking problem, and we use SVM rank for this. So basically, when you're trying to decide whether to put Fatha, Kasra, Dhamma at, at, as a case ending at the end, we would use all sorts of features, like, for example, the current word or the current stem or a combination of the word that I'm, that I'm you know, my, the current word and the previous word or the previous word plus the current word and the next word and uh, the prefixes of my word and the prefixes and of the two previous uh, words. And all sorts of combinations, I mean, these the combinations, if you notice that the number of combinations that you can actually try is almost infinite, right? Uh, because we have so many features that Farasa gives us. So Farasa gives us uh, the stem, gives us the prefix, gives us the suffix, uh, the, the part of speech of, of the stem, the word and the prefix and the suffix, and whether a word is the masculine or feminine, which is singular or plural, and, uh, and, and the stem template and so on and so forth. And this is just the, 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 you know, all the features of the word itself, plus all the context around it. So we have all this information uh, about all the words before it and all the words after it. And if you look at the number of, of features, it, you know, the number of features is, potential features is very, uh, is, is very, very high. And so we had to be judicious on which features we actually try out because we would write each feature manually. And we would say, try this plus this plus that, or try this plus this minus that, and so on and so forth. So we were actually limited uh, in the number of features we tried. Uh, and even though we were limited, we used probably a few dozen features uh, to see which ones, and we would try to guess which ones would actually make a difference and which one would not make a difference. And we also applied some heuristics to, to make sure that, uh, that we are, uh, to make sure things a little uh, simpler uh, or, or to, uh, to improve the, uh, the, uh, the ranking. So for example, if we know that, uh, that, that, that our part of speech is a verb, then a verb can never get, uh, cannot never be majroor, so it never give a kasra, so you can never, never, you can never say yadri bi, for example, that, that, that it's not, it's not allowed. Uh, and if you're in present tense or a past tense, then there, there's some, you know, uh, uh, some restrictions on what you, what you can see. We also applied other, you know, heuristics, like, for example, if we've seen the word always being uh, with, with a single, with, with a specific uh, uh, case ending, then uh, we would restrict to, uh, to that case ending every time during decoding. Or, for example, if it ends with a un or an in at the end, uh, then, you know, it always get a fatha because it's a noun in plural form and so on and so forth. So we started applying lots of heuristics to limit our search space as much as possible. Uh, so the results of case ending uh, using SVM rank by itself gave us, as you can see, about 13% word error, a little, a little over 13% word error rate. Heuristics helped a little bit. And even though the numbers are, are, are really terrible, I mean, I, <laughs> I mean, like, uh, it, it, you, you, you can really feel, the, I mean, the number of the, the errors that you actually see are, are too many. You can, the, the user can easily see them. Right, but still we were doing much much better than the competition. So Madamira, which was trained on uh, ATB, had more than nineteen percent. Uh, Rashwan had about uh, almost sixteen percent, and uh, Billy Coven Glass had thirty percent. So this is not working for us. So we tried a different method, and the different method uh, was actually uh, 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 motivated by the ability to search all combinations of features or the combinations of, of, uh, of com uh, you know, the, the feature space as much as we can, okay? Uh, so the nice thing about RNNs, uh, and here we use the current neural networks and specifically uh, bi-directional uh, LSTMs, uh, it can actually look at all combinations of the state 
and of the context at the same time. Uh, and instead of actually have, having to, to specify all the features by hand, then it will actually, or the combinations of features by hand, then the RNN would, uh, would do it on itself. So we had the features, for example, as I told you, the stem, the part of speech, the stem, uh, the part of speech of the stem, the stem template, the prefix, the part of speech of the prefix suffix, part of speech of the suffix, the gender and number, leading characters, trailing characters, uh, whether the word always appears with a sukun at the end and so on and so forth. So we're able to generate the same features, all the primitive features that we used in the previous experiments where we're using the SVM rank. And then we're allowing, instead of saying, oh, look at this word plus the stem together, the RNN will do this on our behalf automatically. And uh, and and hopefully given all the this information where we're getting the state uh, features plus the context features, uh, the, the RNN would hopefully try and, and get the, the, decretiz the decretization uh, correctly, okay? So as I said, RNNs can examine all possible features and unlike humans, they have no apprehension about, uh, think of, uh, they, they, I mean, they're not limited to features that make sense uh, because, we, because humans can only think by, by, based on their experience and uh, they are limited in the number of features that they would that, that they cannot that they can come up with, uh, but RNNs are exhausted in the in the features combinations, and this is the the architecture that we used. Basically, we have uh, an embedding uh, feature or an embedding vector for every feature for every word, and then we concatenate them into a very very large uh, uh, feature vector, and then we throw it to the by LSTM, and then we have a dense layer of softmax and get the output on the, at, the, at the end. Uh, how does it compare to what we've seen before? So if you use uh, words by themselves, uh, you would get using the vile STM uh, or the RNNs, you'll get 9%. And notice that 9% is much lower than using our system from before that used the, all the, the SVM rank one. And then when we started adding surface features, like for example, the stem and the prefix and the suffix, the, the, the head and trailing characters, it improved by, by significantly. When we started adding part of speech uh, information, it also improved. Uh, and then uh, when we used morphological features, it also improved. And then when we combined all of them together, uh, we got about 3.7%. And notice that, uh, that this is much, much, much better than all the systems that we had before. Uh, we put here 10.4% for, for Farasa because between the time that we uh, developed the first system and we published it, and then by the time we had the system, we had improved the initial system just slightly. So as you can see, uh, the, 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 the case ending error rate is about a third of other competing systems, or, or sometimes even less than a third. Uh, so this, I mean, using, using uh, you know, uh, I mean, it's, it's almost amazing that, uh, that deep neural networks uh, can do so much with, uh, with, uh, and, and, and produce such good results using the same data that, uh, that, uh, that you're constantly using. So we became a bit greedy and uh, Hamdi and Mubarak led this effort where we said, okay, what if we use uh, something like a translation, like a sequence to sequence translation model? We would give it a word, then we'll try to produce uh, the decretized form for this word. And even more greedily, we try to do this at character level. So instead of, of, of having the, the notion of a word and a word in context and so forth, we would represent every word as a group of, uh, you know, uh, of characters. So tamakkana ulama Britannia and so forth. So tamakkana would be ta, mim, kaf, noon, right? And then we have uh, the, the decretized form on the other side. So the inputs will be the characters. And then we have, ov obviously, I'm sorry, we have uh, word separators between the words and the output would be the decretized form of, uh, of each character on its own. Uh, and also one of the things we can do is we can actually apply multiple contexts. So we can say, okay, uh, tamakkana, which is the first word, we'll assume that it will, you know, that uh, it had, you know, some words before it and words, but since it's the beginning of the word, just the, 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 the beginning marker. And then again, the beginning marker followed by the, the next word or followed by the, the, second, the, the two uh, trailing words or the three or four and so forth. So we can actually see the word in multiple contexts at the same time. And then we would train all of them. You would give all of this to uh, the, uh, 
uh, to the sequence to sequence uh, translator or uh, in this case yeah so we're just translating from from undecretized to decretized uh, and then this would allow us since we have the same word being decretized in multiple contexts then this would allow us to use uh, things like voting and the nice thing is we're not we're not worried about words uh, and we we are actually not using any features at all so given this uh, you can see that uh, you know if you use multiple contexts and use voting and so forth and using uh, y y the combination that given the combination of all of these at the end we would get uh, a, a, a case ending word error rate under three uh, percent which in the previous cases it was about three point seven percent here we're getting two point eight nine and at the same time the nice thing about this is that we're also guessing uh, the core word that critics also at the same time without having two separate systems for core words and, and case endings. And if you remember uh, from the previous slide, our core word error rate was about 3%. So this is actually better by its, its I mean, it cut the, the word error rate by more than a third. And this cut the word error rate, you know, by at least uh, uh, 20%. And the combined word error rate at the end was 4.49%. So to compare everything together, uh, if we use Farasa using the, uh, the our best uh, uh, core word uh, using the HMM model with all the backoffs and so forth, plus the RNN system, we get about 6% error rate. And using the sequence to sequence uh, method, we're getting about 4.5% word error rate. So you might say, okay, but but you mentioned in the beginning of the, the I mean, the title of the talk is bring all your features for uh, for Arabic uh, decretization, and now you're kind of negating yourself. Well, not completely. So uh, in comparing the classical uh, ML method of uh, of like an SVM rank with RNNs and sequence to sequence, uh, the one that we actually employ in production, though, if you go to uh, to farasa.qci.org and actually try the the system. Uh, online, we're actually using the RNN system. And there are several reasons why we're doing this, even though it has more errors. Uh, I, I mean, like it has, you know, one of, one of them has, uh, the RNN has 6% six, 6 word error rate and the sequence to sequence has 4.5% uh, error rate. One RNNs are much, 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 much faster than, uh, than sequ sequence to sequence. And the second thing is sequence to sequence have a, a tendency of hallucinating. Uh, so basically, sometimes it would generate characters or uh, that that you that did not exist in input, and this is a problem that is is not so simple to. I mean, overall you're doing better, but it, when it when it goes crazy, it really goes crazy. Goes crazy, and the accuracy of the sequence to sequence, uh, you know, is slightly better than RNNs, and both of them are much 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 faster than the classical ML keys. Uh, so basically, we, we, in, in production, as I told you, we have the RNNs. And we, you can actually try the sequence to sequence uh, system on the uh, on our website, if uh, on the on the farasa.qcri.org website, if you would like to compare both of them together. But the first thing you notice is the difference in speed is is, is quite dramatic. And if you put input large text, then you can you may actually uh, experience some of the hallucination that I mentioned. Okay, so this is kind of the end. Uh, so if you have any questions, I'm I'm happy to answer, and I hope uh, the presentation was clear enough for your uh, for your understanding.